Hi and welcome to another whiteboard testing video. Um, in this video we're going to talk about what to check and where to check it. So I've done a rough diagram, a rough flow of something that I think most of us do. Um, this is not tied to a specific role or a specific person, I think this is a generic flow. Um, I'm going to try and talk about some examples as we go through the video. So, in my opinion, all checks start with some kind of testing. Um, yeah, sure, it depends on your definition of testing, but for me, we have to collect some information from somewhere. So we start with testing. So this could be this could be a tester testing an application. It could be a developer writing some code and then running it locally to see what's going on. Either way, this activity produces some information. So we have some testing, and then this um, generates some you know some body of knowledge, some information, and um, some factual things. And then out of that piece of knowledge, there might be some things that we think, actually, that is really important. Um, I need to know if that piece of information ever changes um, because it's fundamental to our application. If it changed, it could cause serious damage to the company, to its reputation, to sales, etc. And um, so we highlight some of it that we believe is really important. Now, from that really important piece, we end up over here now. And now this is where we have to stop. A lot of people don't stop at this point. We've highlighted something now that we want to check, and now we should slow down a little bit. And I'll tell you why we should slow down. The reason this we should slow down is we need to now think deeply and think critically about this thing we want to check and try and establish where the best layer is to do this check. Now, for an example, it's a bit small, but it's basically a UI, and there's a graph on there with some kind of um, average uh, line drawn through it, and there are some numbers. Now, some people might immediately think, okay, um, we'll, we'll, we'll check that the graph looks right and the numbers are the same, and we'll do that, or we'll use WebDriver. Now, what, what is it here that we're actually interested in? Now, is it the fact that the graph is rendered correctly? Is it the fact that the numbers are displayed on the screen in the correct way? Or is it actually the fact that the graph has the right values in it? What is it that we want to check here? Or do we want to check both? But even if you want to check both, what's the best location, what's the best layer to do this in? So we have to think, um, we have to think critically. So the majority of the time, this testing over here is done at some interface. Now that could be, that could be a UI, it could be an API, yeah, it could be a class, um, it could be anything, but we've, we've established this information at some interface. So now we need to see if we can go down to see if we can find another location where this uh, information is still checkable. Um, and if you've never done this before, this is fantastic learning. Um, so, you know, if you're starting at the UI and you can see everything's correct on the UI, you have to then think to yourself, where's the UI getting this information from? And then you might say, oh, the API. And then, like, well, where's the API getting this information from? It's fantastic to establish how your application truly works. Um, and if you don't know how to do this, talk to people. Talk to your developers. Talk to your business analysts. If you still have a solutions architect, I think they're rare these days, but if you still have one, go and talk to them. Try and establish the layers that exist in your application. So we have to work out where the best is to check this knowledge. So once we've established this, once we've had these conversations and we've got a lot more information now, um, we can now think, yeah, but, but can we actually do it? Um, you know, we've established that, yes, we should do this at uh, the unit level or we should do this at the API level, but do we actually have the skills and the people and the knowledge to actually do this? Um, so this is the context now. So now we have to say, you know, um, we want to check that the data is all correct. Oh, well, we don't have a framework for testing APIs. Well, let's build one. Um, oh, yeah, we haven't got the time to build one then. So, um, okay, well, then we'll do it on the UI. But at least you've gone through the thought process. Now, nowadays, for me, though, I think we need to do this regularly. So if your answer always becomes we should just do it on the UI or we should just do it on the API, um, then you need to start thinking about perhaps investing in other frameworks, other tools. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about automating this there. I know it might come across that way, but you know, basically we're saying what layer should we check this? Um, most of the time, obviously, you're probably wanting to look to automate your checks because as we um, established in previous videos, they're perfect for it. Um, but either way, you're trying to have tools and access into layers that you may not have before. Um, and funny enough, if you try and automate at a certain layer, you probably end up building a tool that testers or developers or anyone can use to actually manually get in at that layer as well. Um, so expose that if you do. But it's about context. Now, one of my biggest bugbears with the um, automated uh, checking and testing world and just testing in general is people's obsession uh, with certain tools. Now, even if you do this process and the only skill set you have happens to be a certain tool, um, let's say WebDriver, 
um, for an example. Um, now, regardless of the outcome of this, it will always look like a nail, regardless. Um, because you've got a hammer, and you know that if that looks like a nail, you can do it, you keep your job, and everything goes on nicely. Um, but, as everyone knows, the UI isn't the best place to have a lot of automation. Again, it depends on what it is you want to check, but again, if you're not doing this step here, then you know, it, you, you're know you opening yourselves up to be fatigued. Um, but if you are doing this step and you still come to the conclusion that the UI is the best place, then fair enough, keep going. Um, but I think with the way we're moving these days and the way systems are architected, that you know we need to start thinking lower down the stack. Um, so yeah, over here, you know, think about the tools. And if you don't have the tools, perhaps just go and learn them. There are so many libraries and so many frameworks out there nowadays that can help you, and they're quick to get going. Um, you know, the open source tools are really available these days, and one of the things they've vastly improved is their documentation. Um, so, you know, it's very easy to get off the ground with some of these new tools. So do have a play and see if you can enhance your school's tools environment and time um, so that you can respond and create checks at a certain layer. Because one of the things that you can do is, if you can find the lowest point where your check is still relevant, most of the time it's going to be a faster execution, um, it's going to be more targeted, uh, and when it fails, you know why it's failed. When things fail on the UI, um, it could be a whole host of things that made it fail. It could be that the API went down. It could be that the data was calculated. It could be that the graph engine is not working correctly. It could be so many things that it takes longer to debug. Whereas if it's on the API and you can see that the data came back wrong, you've immediately now got a place to go. Is it sending the right data as in the right object? Or is that calculation now broken? Or is it actually that the database has got wrong values in it? Even that it's easier to debug if you can work out the correct layer to do it on. So yeah, that's what I just want to talk about. Again, quick recap, it's about once you've highlighted a piece of knowledge, just really, really seriously think critically about what's the best layer you can do that on. Um, and yeah, sure, you're going to end up with a whole host of tools and a whole host of frameworks, but it will be more um, responsive and uh, work better for you in the long run, in my experience and my opinion. Um, once, I've lowered, um, once I've lowered checks down the stack, Again, I'm not just talking about automation. I use um, I use Postman a lot with APIs, and that allows me to check things before they get to my mobile application. I can check that the data being sent to my app is correct, um, because I don't want to go to the app and then find having to like, well, that's not correct, that's not correct, and then start thinking, is it the app? So I test on the API first using Postman, and then I go back to my UNI. It's the same here. If I know there's critical things I need to check. I can automate them or I can do them manually, but try and do it at the right layer because it will benefit you in the long term. And yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you really like the video, um, please share them. And the more people that um, are aware of whiteboard testing, hopefully the more people I can get to create videos and uh, we can continue this, uh, this uh, idea and initiative going. That's thank you for watching. Cheers.